you don't want me to wind up because I was wound up to preach this morning. Hell is real. I got three people grunt amen. That tells me a lot of the rest of you are afraid of it. There's no place like hell. I've been in hospital wards. I feel God all over me. Somebody's about to get their last call. Your last opportunity. Your last reprieve. Your last chance. That's what I like. Pray. Pray, church. You know the pyramids. Such wonderful people. Such wonderful people. A woman had been in their church for five years. The woman you're about to see. They prayed. They fasted. They did everything they could do to get that millennial to God. Last Sunday morning, following our example, he said, Pastor, I'll never have a service again and not give an altar call. Five years they prayed. Five years they fasted. Five years they begged. She finally came. Last Sunday morning wept her way to the saving grace of Christ, Hallelujah. changed her living situation, started witnessing her faith to other people. And this was the news conference on Friday after last Sunday morning. Watch this. And listen carefully. But God knew what was coming. And he got her right. She went to church. She went to the okay, altar. Hold on. And there was a change in I'm her. Sorry, you, amen. There was a change in her. Okay, and on. God just telling us. Now. Okay, hold on. Can you hear and understand her? If you can, raise your hand. Okay. Because up here, I don't know if she's speaking German. Uh, all right. All right. Start it over. Everybody pray in the Holy Spirit. I, I'm telling you, God is here. And somebody is about to get their last opportunity. Listen to this now. But God knew what was coming. And he got her right. She went to church. She went to the altar. And there was a change in her. you, amen. There was a change in her. And God just telling us. Get it right. Get it right. Because you don't know what is around your corner. Right. You don't know what is around your corner. Right now. I know where my daughter is now because she let it go. She made it right with God. She made it right with me. Praise the Lord. And she was reaching out to people that she hadn't reached to in a while. So I think that God gives us a knowing without knowing what's coming. Yeah, but our spirit knows because we're connected to God. Whether you're connected, you need to get connected. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And you can walk in the peace that I'm having right now. I know I'm going to see her. God tells me in his word that to be absent in the body is to be in the presence of the Lord. Yes, Lord. And I know where she's at. I know where she's at. And uh, we're going to be okay, but y'all need to get okay if you're not okay. I promise you. Because that's that was Sunday. Today is Friday. Today was Friday. She got it right in four days, and she's gone. Hallelujah. You know, God, take this with you. She's gone. She's gone. But she's gone to be with the Lord, and you have a choice. That's right. You have a choice where you're going. And we all know it because we're born with it. That's right. You know, so you can make it right or you can keep it wrong. 
and I'm just pleading with you guys to talk to God tonight. You know, it only takes saying, I'm sorry, God, lead me. You know, because he loves us all. He loves us all. And she's right. It's not about black and white. It's not about... It's not about color. It's not, not about age. no. It's not about none of that. It is about you got to get it right because right. you don't know when you hop in your car and go. <laughs> are you going to be gone and where are you going? I'm taking comfort. I know where she went. Praise God gave that to me Sunday because as she went to the altar, I'd never had a release like I had Sunday when he just he just gave me a peace, a joy. I was finally able to rejoice with her because I felt the break off of her. Y'all can have it too. <coughs> That's right. Right now, it's a bad and on Red Fork Road. If we stay. Wait a minute. That's a news conference. Not a year ago, not years ago. That's a news conference Friday. Sunday morning, just like this, seven days ago, that girl was standing in one of our pews making a decision consecrating receiving eternal life four days later she's gone you want to know if God's real you tell me a mother that could stand in front of cameras like that and issue love toward the man that killed, murdered her daughter. Left her with a little baby. Hell is real. I would to God. I had a major network. Tell me this week. We won't have any time for you. Your message is too straightforward. You use the word sin. Can you imagine? America's right on the heels of Canada. Right on the heels of Europe. Where even Christian outlets don't want the preaching of the gospel. Hell is real. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And there is no place like hell. I know a man attacked with a muscular disease. His muscles shriveled away in his body. He could no longer stand, could no longer be in a wheelchair without being strapped in, could no longer speak, laying there, a young man, unable to get a fly off his nose. He was a Christian. His wife could no longer care for him in a little home with others so unfortunate. He wanted someone to pray with him every day. Finally, someone said, how can you still hold on to your faith? He asked for a little pin and put a little pad on his knee. And he said, I can't let go of my faith because there's no place like hell. You may think you're living a hell on earth. There is no such thing. You see the homeless man scooting down the street on a little skateboard 
where his legs were blown off in Vietnam, his knuckles bare, the pain so incredible as he huddles in a corner under an un overpass under a little cardboard to try to shelter himself. What a horrible, horrible way to have to live. My little neighbor girl, same age as my daughter who you saw dance all over this platform. 29 years old, has never taken a bite of food, has never communicated with a friend, has never gone to a prom, lying on a bed. A doctor severed her spine when she was born. Never drive, never go on a date. But I can tell you right now, if Elizabeth was in hell today, she would beg to get back in that bed of affliction because there's no place like hell. Here's the hope she has. God doesn't touch that little shriveled body. There's coming a moment when Elizabeth will fly away into the presence of God forever. Don't you ever tell anybody, go to hell. Don't you ever think your situation is a hell on earth. There's no place like hell. Where the worm doesn't die. In Ethiopia today, there are bloated bodies floating down a putrid river full of human refuse swollen worms eating their body but that river as horrible as it is think of it if you would douse it in oil and light it on fire now you begin to glimpse that there's no place like hell Hell where the fire is never quenched. Hell where there are no prayers to be heard or answered. Hell with its darkened abyss and its billowing flames. Where your eyes are on fire, your mouth is on fire. People that have lost their limbs in hell will wish those limbs were not there for the pain and the agony I'm quoting Bible to you I wandered far away from God I've been selfish and self-interested I've been one of those that would wish church would get over I've been one of those that couldn't wait to get out the door. I've been one of those that has to be coped to church. Let me explain to you that Bible says plainly, if you are lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. No passion, no prayer, no zeal, no hunger for the word of God. Never bringing anybody to church. Never leading anybody to Jesus. And not helping anybody that does. Handle the word of God and never win a soul. God help us. People say, Pastor, why do you preach like you do? There's no place like hell.
I've been in hospital wards. I've seen people with two thirds of their face eaten away with cancer. But were they in hell, they'd beg to get back in that ward. Why is it so quiet? Well, that's too much, Pastor. Well, tell Jesus. He's the one that preached it. The church doesn't even know how to respond. That's where your family's headed. But you were too busy to get to church today. The church better start falling on its face. The church better start praying for a spirit of conviction. The church better stop being such little mamby babies. And realize we're in a war. Yeah, somebody's going to hurt your feelings. Bless your heart. If your option is hell, what choice do you have but to forgive? Here's your option about forgiveness. Do it or learn what hell's like. Well, I'm not going to go to a church like this. Well, okay. Then the Valor students and I, we'll go down around the women's clinic and I'll build a church next door to hell because maybe this one's too close to heaven. Maybe we're too blessed. We lose sight of eternity. Right. We've lost sight of God. Right. When the gospel is all about you and this natural world, we've lost sight of the gospel. God, give me a church so on fire that on Saturday night people can't sleep for praying a spirit of conviction in here on Sunday morning yeah, yeah, that if a lost man walks through that door, he can't wait for the first song. He's already in the old. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. I'm gonna to count to three. I can barely stand here. In all seriousness, my legs are so weak under the anointing of God. I've only said this two other times in 42 years of ministry. Somebody has been playing with God, acting the part, going through the motions, Today is your day to get right. Revival is not when that world out there gets right. It's when you get right. Tomorrow's promise to no man. You better quit playing with God. Yeah. You better quit fooling around in the kingdom. You better quit dabbing your toe in the river of life and then running back into the world. You better quit sitting in the dormitory and hiding marijuana in your room. Hell is real, and there's no place like hell. I'll be honest with you. I want to go to heaven. I, I do. I want to go to heaven. Yes. But if I'd live my life and die tomorrow, and there was no heaven, I would have had a wonderful life. So I don't want just to go to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. You talk about a deterrent. God loves you so much that the alternative he gives you to heaven is hell. Think about that. That's the alternative. God said, that's the alternative. Serve me and I'll give you life. Yes, yes, yes. Not only here, but forever. Yes. I'm going to count to three. You want to make sure you're ready to meet God. I could have been in Kentucky last Sunday preaching this message. And that girl be there. 
What if she'd said no? What if she'd been prideful? What if she said, I'll wait till next week? Come on home to Jesus. Come on home. Don't care. I, I feel the doubt and unbelief's all gone. And I feel there are people here that want to wrap their arms around you. I don't care if you're an elder. I don't care if you're a deacon. I don't care if you're an usher. I'm telling you, I'm burning up this morning with the anointing of God. Everybody in this building, everybody in Elkhart, Indiana, everybody watching me online, everybody watching me on Facebook, hear this call. Yes. There's no place like hell. And you don't ever have to go there. That's right. Come to Jesus. Yes. Make it right. Do it now. On three, raise that hand and let's pray. One, two, three. Lift it and raise it up. Don't put it down. Don't put Some of you Christians need to pray rather than clap. Some of you should have had your hands raised. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Just as quickly as you raise that hand, run if you can and meet me at this altar and let's pray. Sing. Everyone, come along, come on. In Elkhart, come on. Break the chains. Make sure you're right with God. Online. Just tell us in the comments. I'm accepting Jesus today. Come on. God requires more of me I can't let go of my salvation there's no place like hell come on darling come on darling come on darling come to Jesus If God required anything more of me, I could not let go of my salvation. There's no place like hell. If he said pray more, I'd remember there's no place like hell. Who is that lady? Do you know her? No, don't stick a microphone in her face. It's, it's her mother-in-law. Okay, this is your mother-in-law. How long have you been coming here? Since November. Just since November. I'm so glad. How old is your mother-in-law? 65. 66, sorry. 66 years old. Coming to Jesus today. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> How old's that little boy right there with the Cincinnati Bengals or whatever it is on? 
He's four. Four years old. Four years old. Six to six years old. I'll get to preach this message. At some point, the light of innocence goes out. Never tell a child you're too young. Never tell a child that. The moment they know right from wrong, the light of innocence goes out. Kid Harvest is full of children who are no longer under innocence. What are we doing to reach them? Everybody pray this prayer out loud. Heavenly Father, I come to you this morning just as I am. I've fallen short of the mark. I have sinned. I come today asking you to forgive me. To give me your life. To give me your life. The ability, the ability to, live right. to live right. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus come, into my heart. come into my heart. Forgive all my sins. Forgive all my sins. Erase my past. Erase my past. And let me be born again. Let me be, born let me be a new creature. Let me be a new and let me know that I'm as sure for heaven as if I was already there. I will live for you as you show me how. I'll come to church. I'll get a Bible. I'll learn. I'll worship. I'll thank you for this moment when I became a citizen of heaven, forgiven. <laughs> It makes me feel so good. I think I could just clap and say hallelujah.